Now let's practice describing distributions when we're looking at a stem and leaf plot. Um, these ones looked pretty silly when I put six of them up on the screen, so I'm just going to scroll through them one by one. Have a look at this first one here. What do you think we could say about that distribution? The first thing I notice is the skew. It's got a serious shape to it. I mean, it almost looks like a perfect triangle, you know? I can see that there. So here is the top of the mountain and I roll down the mountain towards positive numbers because numbers increase going this way, one up to seven, and they decrease going this way. So rolling down the mountain towards positive numbers. So it's positively skewed. Are there any outliers? No, they all tend to follow the same sort of pattern. What about the center? Well, if it was worth mentioning the median because of what the data is, what the question is asking you, then you just work it out using the methods we know. So you go one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top, count your way into the middle, find the center and comment on that. It's going to be somewhere in this line here-ish, I think, somewhere in there, just given how many numbers are in the top and how many numbers are in the bottom. Okay, let's move on to this next one. What do you notice about this one? It's basically flipped up, isn't it? It's kind of looking like a triangle, but it goes the other way. So we put our pen on the top of the mountain. This is the peak. This is the high point of all the numbers. And we roll our pen away from the peak. And our pen, our arrow, is now pointing towards negative numbers. They decrease going that way, don't they? So it's negatively skewed. Are there any outliers? No. What about the center? So we would find the median and make some comment on that. And what about the spread? Again, this is pretty spread out, just like the last one was. We've got numbers from 1 to 7 in our stems, and the leaves, there's at least one leaf for every one of those numbers. So this is fairly widely spread out. But again, spread is best when talking about a comparison between two things, because is it spread out? Is it not spread out? Well, you know, if you only see one, what's the difference between widely spread and narrowly spread? Anyway, moving on. Next one. Have a look at this one. What do you think the shape is? Where's the peak of the mountain, first of all? The peak is roughly here-ish. So draw Everest with a little snow cap. La la la. Here is the peak of the mountain. I want to go skiing. Which way am I going to go skiing? Well, either of them would pretty much net the same result, wouldn't they? There isn't really a particular trend, one side or the other. So what does that mean? It means it's symmetrical. Are there any outliers? No, they all kind of fall within the same pattern. It all kind of works. Where is the center of the data? It's going to be pretty much here somewhere if you count your way into the middle because these, uh, these leaves are all balanced. Look, there's two in this line, two in that line, five in that line, five in that line, seven in that line, seven in that line. I think it's going to be exactly there. So this that's, would be finding the center of the data, but of course you'd do it the proper way rather than guesstimating because for all I know I've done that completely terribly. Anyway, moving right along, what about the spread? It's also quite uh, spread out, I would say. It's got quite a wide spread. Um, and, you know, you would talk about the IQR or the range, which you can read really quickly off a stem and leaf plot because you just say 77 minus 11 equals 66. There we go. That's the range. What about the next one? Having a look at this one here, what's the first thing that sticks out like a sore thumb? Hint, hint. See that guy there? That looks all kind of hinky. I reckon that would be an outlier. What about the rest of it? Ignoring the outlier, what does the shape of this top part have? Well, here's the peak of the mountain, and it looks like you can ski down the mountain this way. So it's pointing towards positive numbers. So this part of the data is positively skewed. And then for some reason, you've got some guy out here. So maybe it could be someone really tall or really fast or paid really well or, you know, all of these things in our data group. What about this next one? Okay, I notice another outlier here. Oh, look, there's the remainder of my last scribble. Here we go, outlier. It's the first thing I notice. What about the rest of it? It has a definite shape. Here's the peak of the mountain here. This is the high point where all of the data is clustered. Going to put my pen on there, and which way do I go when I'm traveling? Towards negative numbers. So we've got negatively skewed with one outlier. Okay, what about this next one? Looking at that, what do you notice? There's a lot more data points in each line, 
and there's none in the bottom and the top. So even though it's still counting from 1 to 7, so I've done it on the same scale so you can notice this, it means it's all bunched up. So the spread of this one is much smaller. It actually has a much lower range because we're looking at the difference between 59 and 31, which is 28. So compared to the range of 60 and 66 that we had on earlier examples, this one's got a much smaller range. It's much more bunched up, all close together. And it's roughly symmetrical. My mountain is nice and even, so I don't really want to go skiing either side because it's going to be balanced either way. So symmetrical, no outliers, quite a small spread. And where's the center of it? It's going to be roughly here somewhere, but you would work that out. And finally, let's practice describing the distribution of some dot plots. Now remember, a dot plot is like a histogram, like a frequency histogram. It's just instead of drawing a bar meeting up with the particular frequency. So for example, this is a frequency of 1, this is a frequency of 2, this is a frequency of 3, 4, and 5. Instead of just saying this has a bar that lines up with 2, we actually just draw two dots representing the two frequencies. And again, this is a frequency of 3 on a histogram. Whoops. On a histogram, we would draw that like that, but here we just draw the three dots to show the three occurrences of whatever this happens to be down here. So in other words, describing a, a dot plot is very, very similar to describing a histogram. Look for the same things. So this first one here, does it have any skewing to it either side? It's eh, roughly balanced. So this one we're going to call symmetrical. No outliers, and the center is going to be here somewhere. We would talk about that as opposed to... In fact, let's look over here at this one next, because these two are quite good to compare. This one, also very symmetrical, so that doesn't have any skewing. We're not going to talk about that. The center is in the same uh, sort of spot. This is the center of the data here, but the spread is quite different. This one is more spread out than this one is. This is all bunched up close together, and this travels greater distance along this scale. What about this one in the center, coming back here? I see a serious mountain with a hillside. I'm going to put my pen up here on the top of the mountain, roll down the hill. Which way is my arrow pointing? Towards positive numbers. So this one is positively skewed. And I don't see any outliers. And again, this one is quite spread out. It travels the entire distance of this, of this scale when compared to this one, which only covers three of these points, if you see what I'm saying. What about this one over here? Well, the center is in much higher spot. Over here the center was quite low so that was like this equivalent is here-ish and that was where the center was for that stuff. Now the center has moved right up here so that's something you would comment on. And it's also not very spread out. We've only got these three lines here so this is all quite bunched up. It doesn't spread very far but it does have a bit of skewing to it. I can see a mountain there. I'm going to put my pen on it, roll down the mountain. I'm pointing towards negative numbers so that's negatively skewed that one. And what else do you notice about it? It basically sticks out as the first thing you see. It's this little guy right there. He's doing something shonky. That is an outlier if ever I saw one. Okay, what about this one over here? Definitely a mountain with a little bit of a, a peak coming off to one side. So a peak. What's the opposite of a peak? A hill, a trench. It moves away from the peak. So we go down the hill like this. Which way is the arrow pointing? It is pointing towards positive numbers. I nearly wrote negatively just then. Positively skewed. Any outliers? Mm, maybe this guy, but I think you would have to do your one IQR times 1.5 test to check it out. It's probably not an outlier. It's probably just part of this overall pattern of the shape. This one I'm talking about. Okay, and this last one. Not that much data in this one. It's still quite spread out. The center of it is probably going to be somewhere here-ish. So it's, you know, up the higher end of the scale as opposed to this one where the center is somewhere here-ish. So, but this one does have a bit of skewing. It's not quite, you know, Mount Everest, but there is a bit of a peak here. And if you roll down that way, you're going to be pointing towards negative numbers. So this one is negatively skewed. The peak doesn't have to be massive for it to still imply that there is some skewing going on, just so you know. And that is describing the distribution of dot plots.